How positive can you be when your life goes to complete shit? How positive can you be? Can you stick to your nutrition when your life goes to hell? Can you stick to your workout when your life goes to shit? Are you going to run like a bitch to those vices that always saved you from yourself? When I sat in the shoe that long and we had nothing to look forward to, every motherfucker in there was on heroin but me. But me. Every one of them. Every one. My celly's standing at the window to get his tray. Oh, oh, oh what's for breakfast? Oh, and he's talking to the fucking the CO and the CO's looking at him like, Jesus Christ, pull it together. Eh. Don't you ever look at that shit and glorify it and look at it as any bit hard or tough or cool that you and your friends can go do some dope. That is the bitchest, weakest, running away from your fucking blessed ass life shit ever. And you know you feel like a bitch because I've been there in that bitch ass situation feeling like less of myself and just giving up on life. It's pathetic and it's disrespectful to everybody who loves you and believes in you. It's straight up disrespectful. Discipline. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. You're not going to get it kicking your feet up, having your favorite pastry, reading that sweet little book that puts you in cupcake land in the morning. Discipline comes from living harder. Live harder. That's it. That's it. What's the hardest thing for you to do each day? Do them. Not these foolish motherfuckers who literally make up stuff that's not supporting their goals and call it hard and do it. I'm talking about the simple things, the wake up time, the training, the diet, the key to self mastery is through what we ingest. We gain discipline in these areas and then we transfer them. Why would we not attack the root? The root of the problem is always gonna be discipline. You don't got a drug problem, got a discipline problem, homie. You don't got an anger problem, got a discipline problem, homie. This is what it comes down to. I always tell people, I'm the first person who ever said this. They say, Wes, why do you stay lean year round? Why do you stay ripped year round? Why don't you bulk up, put on some more size? Why do you stay lean year round? I stay lean year round so that I'm nicer to my people, nicer to my wife, nicer to everybody and kinder. Because the fact is, when we break character, when we break our plan, when we just go pleasure seek, Nothing, everything ceases to please. Nothing pleases at this point. So we're seeing the faults in everybody around us. We become a critical asshole that's not supplying solutions. So we end up not constructively criticizing. We're just criticizing at that point because we feel like shit about ourselves. So the thing is, what we ingest is the key to self-mastery. The key to self-mastery is through what we ingest. And in the penitentiary, I learned if I limit desires, if I limit food intake, limit all these things that people were chasing, I wouldn't go outside the fence. I wouldn't go into the past. I wouldn't go into the future. I wouldn't crave anything other than what was under my control. And that's the secret. Fully submersed in the now, fully in control of what's in your control. In all reality, if you were disciplined enough, Right now, right now with the enough discipline, the job you have, the food you got, you can be ripped and rich in an allotted amount of time, depending on the time frame. But guess what? I teach the 10 year plan. I didn't get nowhere till 10 years into this. That's basically it. Do you have the long view to write out your vision, your plan, your goals, your dreams for a 10 year period? That's what it took for me. That's when it starts to really develop. Originally, it starts off juvenile. The discipline is just, oh, I want to look better. I want to be buffer. But then you start to see it. You start to uncover clues. You start to see all the little variables. Everything starts to take shape. And you start to be like, I'm chasing this feeling. This feeling that I'm in control, that I'm unstoppable. I would be sitting on my rack. Everybody's eating ho-hos, cupcakes, fucking Twinkies and shit in the pen they call them Zuzus and Wham Whams. That's just what they call them. They're fucking weirdos. They got weirdo names for every fucking thing. That's it. And so we would just literally sit back and I would have the bare essentials. 
and let it just push me, pushing down all that fucking desire for anything. In all reality, if you want contentment in this life, it comes from moderating desire, not flying to your dreams. So during those days where I had nothing but a shitload of pain inside me, I moderated what I desired. I wanted to get out. I wanted to see my mom. I wanted all this shit. I wanted to be back to the normal world, but it wasn't coming for a long time. So I had to learn to moderate that desire with what I could, what I could fulfill inside myself, which was this work, all the work, all the answers in life that I ever found came on the other side of my pain and sacrifice. Pain and sacrifice is the teacher, and when that adversity's real thick, you get to see who the fuck you are.